Hi guys, welcome to our channel and my name is Ajay Kumawat and today in this video we are going to see about access control list. Okay, so in this video we are going to see that what is access control list. Okay, and then after we are going to see that what is an inbound interface, what is an outbound interface and after that we are going to see what is the difference between your standard ACL and extended ACL. Okay, so let's start with the video. So first of all we are going to see what is ACL. Okay, so if we discuss about ACL that what is ACL, your ACL is a set of rules defined for controlling the network traffic as well as reducing the network attacks. Okay, so how your ACL is going to control the network traffic and how it is going to uh, help you reduce the network attacks with the help of predefined rules. Okay, so ACL is nothing but a set of rules that are defined. Okay, and these rules, these are defined by the admin itself. Okay. So the admin will be defining that what kind of traffic they want to allow and what kind of traffic they do not want to allow. Okay. So your ACL, we can also say like your ACL are used to filter the network traffic based on the set of rules that are defined for incoming and outgoing of the network. Okay. So with the help of ACL, you can filter out the incoming traffic as well as the outgoing traffic. Okay. Now, once you have created the ACL, you will be defining the ACL. Okay, you have already defined the ACL. Now, what you want to do, you want to implement the ACL. You want to apply this particular ACL. So to apply this ACL, you will be using an interface of the router and based on the direction that whether the traffic is incoming or outgoing, this can be, there can be two types of interface we can have on a router. That is inbound interface and second is the outbound interface. Okay, so if we discuss about the inbound interface and the outbound interface that what is an inbound interface and what is an outbound interface so once you have created the access list you will be applying the access list and based on the direction we have inbound and outbound interface so what is an inbound interface your inbound interface is the interface where your traffic is incoming to the route router okay where your router is receiving the traffic okay and the traffic that is incoming to the router, that traffic will be known as your inbound traffic. Okay, that traffic will be known as your inbound traffic. And the interface on which the traffic is incoming, that interface will be known as your inbound interface. Okay, same way we have outbound interface. So outbound interface is the interface through which your traffic will be leaving the router. Okay, the interface through which your traffic will be leaving the router, that interface will be known as your outbound interface and the traffic that is outgoing the router okay that is leaving the router that traffic will be known as your outbound traffic or outgoing traffic okay so if you see here i have taken an example of a router okay and there are two interfaces of the router and if you want to understand that which is an inbound interface and which is an outbound interface so see here let's say the traffic flow is this way this is the way the traffic is flowing so we have two interface one this side and the other interface is this side. So according to the traffic flow, if we see, this is the interface on which the traffic is hitting the router, okay? On which the traffic is incoming to the router. So this is the interface that we will call it as a inbound, okay? So this is the interface that will be known as the inbound interface. and if we see this is the second interface through which the traffic is leaving the router okay so this interface through which the traffic is leaving the router this interface will be known as your outbound okay so this way we can decide that which is the inbound and which is the outbound so how we will decide it we will decide it based on the traffic flow that how the traffic is flowing okay so this is the concept of your inbound interface and outbound interface okay now the next thing we'll see is the types of your access list okay so if we see about the types of your access list we have two types of access list one is your standard access list and second is your extended access list okay so one type we have your standard access list okay so here we have two types of access list one is your standard access list and second is your extended access list okay so standard and extended now inside these two types of acl we have implementation methods okay the implementation method can be your numbered acl and named acl so basically what is the numbered acl and named acl in the numbered acl you will be using 
numbers. Okay, to decide the type of ACL, you will be using numbers. And in the named ACL, you will be using the name itself. Okay, in the named ACL, you will be using name that why you have created the particular ACL. Okay, you can define the reason of the ACL so that whenever you are checking in the running configuration for the existing ACLs, so your named ACL will help you understand easily that why you have created that particular ACL. Okay, so this is named and numbered ACL. Okay, and basically types of ACL we have two, the named and numbered, these are the implementation method that how you can implement the standard ACL and how you can implement the extended ACL. Okay, so both your standard ACL and extended ACL, they can be implemented in two ways. One is numbered method and second is using the named method. Okay, and now we are going to see that what is the difference between your standard ACL and extended ACL? So if we talk about the difference, your difference between your numbered ACL and named ACL is your standard ACL, okay, if we talk about the difference between your standard and extended access list, then your standard ACL will be using the number 1 to 99, okay? This is the number that will be used, means if in the access list command, you have the number 1, or you have the number 99 or any number in between, that means that is definitely clearly a standard ACL, okay? And in the access list command, if you have the numbers from 100 to 199, okay, if your number is falling in this range, that means that is a extended ACL, okay? Then after if we talk about your standard access list, so in, with the help of standard access list, you are able to block a specific network, you are able to block a specific host, also you are able to block a specific subnet okay so with the help of standard you are able to block a network host of subnet while if we talk about your extended access list with the help of extended access list you can block a network host subnet but also you are able to block a specific service okay you are able to block a specific service as well now with the help of standard access list if we talk about so your two-way communication is blocked okay means if you have implemented a standard access list, then your two-way communication will be stopped, okay? If there are two devices, they are not supposed to communicate and you have created access list, so your two-way communication will be blocked, okay? But with the help of your extended access list, okay? With the help of your extended access list, only one-way communication will be blocked, okay? With the help of extended access list, one-way communication will be blocked. Now, how this two-way communication will be, will be blocked and how this one-way communication will be blocked, that you will understand in the next video that I'll create with the practical, okay? Where I'll show you the practical for ACL that how standard access list is working and how extended access list is working, okay? So that part we'll see in the practical in the next video, okay? Then more if we talk about, about your standard access list. So your standard access list is going to block all the services, okay? Your standard access list it is going to block all the services, okay? You cannot block a specific service, entire communication will be blocked. And in case of extended access list, you can block a specific selected service itself, okay? Here, the entire communication will not be blocked. Whatever the specific service you are trying to block, that particular service will only be blocked, okay? Then we have your standard access list that your standard access list, you implement it closest to the destination. Okay, why you implement it closest to the destination? Because if you implement the access list closest to the source only, then it will block the entire communication. Okay, it will block the entire communication for that particular network host or subnet. Okay, why your extended access list, you implement it closest to the source. Okay, so again, this thing you will clearly understand in the next video in the practical. Okay, where I'll show you that how it is and why it is implemented close to the destination and why your extended access list is implemented closest to the source, okay? Now, if we talk about standard access list, your standard access list can block or can filter the network traffic based on the source IP address only, okay? Based on the source IP address only, it is able to filter out the network traffic, okay? Why your extended access list is able to block the traffic based on your source IP address, your destination IP address, and also the protocol and port number. And this protocol and port number give us the facility so that we can block a specific service itself, okay? So that is the common difference between your standard access list and extended access list, okay? So 
that was the basic introduction to your access control list okay that we had so if you have any doubt okay regarding this video or any topic so please do leave in the comment and i'll see you guys in the next video